One of the best ways to contribute to an open source software project is by creating add-ons or plugins or adding functionality that um, you can package individually without having to send a patch or contribute to the main or the core of the product. Uh, so in the case of adding, what you have is uh, add-ons or components. So uh, if your project has a component, a UI component, for example, that can be extracted into a separate jar, uh, consider uh, publishing that as a, as a adding add-on. Uh, it's actually very, very simple. And that's what I want to show you in this video. So first we need to create a new project and for that we're going to go to vadin.com slash start and scroll down until you see the add-on starting point. Now you can uh, inspect the code on GitHub if you want and uh, keep in mind that there are that, that if you click here it clearly says it's going to use vadin 14 but if you want to create a, a very, uh, an add-on for the latest version then jump to the um, master branch and download from here okay but in this video I'm gonna use uh, 14 so when you click, click uh, download you'll get a zip file with a maven project that you can import in your ID uh, which I have already done so we save some time and let's explore uh, the steps that you have to follow in order to to make sure that you uh, implement um, um, and package uh, correctly the add-on. So the first thing is the group ID. Uh, there's going to be a change in the in the Valent directory that uh, will prevent you from uploading new add-ons if you don't follow this convention for the group ID. So it needs to start with org.vadin.addons and then you can add whatever you want to uh, to add, but it should start with that. Then it could be the name of your company, organization, or even your name, which is what I'm going to use here. And probably you want to also uh, change the name of the artifact ID, which is kind of the name of the jar uh, that um, developers are going to use when you when they want to include your add-on in their projects, and also when you want to use your add-on in your projects. So I'm going to call this uh, demo add-on. Pick a version, of course, 1.0.0. It's uh, it's recommended if you are just starting with the with a new version of the add-on. Uh, the name demo add-on. It's fine. Uh, maybe include a description. This is just an example. Then you need to pick the version of Vadin that you want to support for your add-on. So uh, I'm gonna use 14. I'm gonna use uh, the the latest. Uh, long-term support version, which is 14.5.3. So I'm going to change to that here. And then you need to decide what Java version you want to support. Now, Vadin supports Java 8 or later, so there's a chance that many developers are still using Java 8 in their projects. Uh, so if you want to um, allow more people to use your, your component, uh, use 8. But if you are using some other uh, language features, for example, in 11, then of course you can always change to that here. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is uh, probably update this um, author with your own name. And that's it really. Uh, you can pick a different license if you want and configure uh, whatever you want to configure here. And um, something important is that you'll find maybe in the uh, dependencies section that there are uh, dependencies in the uh, test scope so uh, any uh, any dependency that you need to kind of test your own add-on you can put here for example if your your add-on requires a lot of data and it, it it would be easier to to create a view only a test view uh, with say a database and the jpa then you can add the the uh, JPA implementations here, the dependencies, mm, for example, Hibernate, uh, but add them in the test scope so that they don't end up in the final artifact because you don't know what your users, users uh, or other developers are going to use. They might just use uh, a different uh, framework for persistence. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, <clears throat> let's close this file 
and jump into the code so the first refactor you probably want to do is the name of the packages so you have uh, main and test so let's uh, change this with maybe my name and demo add on and actually I'm gonna copy this because uh, I will need to change uh, this package as well all right now you need to probably change the name of this class as well so <laughs> right now it's called the add-on <laughs> which is pretty cool uh, but let's use something more descriptive so I'm gonna uh, implement a feedback form let's uh, refactor that and uh, let's uh, actually uh, implement something um, maybe we can uh, get rid of all this distraction for now um, let's organize the imports as well let's use a uh, vertical layout here and let me add some components here as well um, for example a new, new h2 element or a component with a title we can add a new text area and we can add a new button as well to send the, the feedback now we probably need to extract this to a local variable so that we can use it in a in a um, um, click listener Mm. but you, we need to provide a mechanism for the developers to inject their own logic right to to hook their own logic so when uh, when the user clicks the send button maybe one application wants to just show a notification that says thank you for your feedback another application might just add that to a list of feedback or uh, we really don't know right they, maybe they want to save it in the database <laughs> it will make sense right so for that I'm going to introduce here a serializable consumer of string and this is going to be a listener and here we just say listener dot accept whatever it is in the text area to get value alright let's format this code and uh, yeah, so that's about the uh, implementation uh, now this is going to be a public API so other other developers are going to use this so I recommend strongly recommend adding uh, Java doc here so um, let's say this is uh, ready to use feedback form and what else uh, probably this this method or sorry this constructor more specifically um, builds a new form with the specified listener uh, try to be a more descriptive with your own uh, java doc uh, documentation um, called when the user sends the feedback um you get the idea right <laughs> this is fine so you get some nice uh, java doc um that um, that developers can can just read and understand how to use your component all right i think um i think that that's it for the implementation of this very simple component so now let's go to the test um scope so remember these classes are not included in the in the um, actual uh, artifact that that, that projects are going to use but we need some kind of view to test right T to see that that the component actually actually works and the cool thing again uh, I want to stress this uh, is that this class is not going to be included in the final jar all right so let's create here uh, what well, this creates a div that's fine and then we add a new feedback form yeah that's all right we can use that so uh, of course these uh, sorry these um, includes uh, serializable uh, or accept uh, serializable um, consumer so we need to specify that with maybe a lambda expression let's just show 
a notification uh, with that feedback string that we get from there this should be enough for now so now we have a um, implementation of the view so we can uh, go ahead and and um, and run this project so I'm gonna run run a maven build which is jetty run but in fact we don't need to specify that because that's the default if you go to the pom.xml you'll see it there um, and uh, well of course you know this is going to uh, download all the dependencies and build the front end and all that you should be familiar with that already if you are uh, building a uh, um avadin add-on and um what else can we do here maybe we can uh open a new browser over here and see the result just to check that it actually works right it's still building the the application all right yep it's working uh, very good so we don't need the the server anymore we can stop it what we need to do though is to build the actual package that the Vadin uh, directory accepts and uh, so for that mm, you will have to uh, activate a maven uh, profile so maven install uh, make sure you use maven install that phase and then specify the directory uh, profile is that that simple really if you forget that uh, you can always check the, the pom.xml you'll find the the profile right here and see what it does but you also find all the instructions everything that I'm showing you it's here in the readme it's just that I'm showing you in a practical way let's say uh, but you can just copy paste this instruction here all right, so build success, that's very good news, and you'll see this um, information, building zip and the route to a zip file. So let's have a look at that file, which is here. If I refresh this, you'll see it right there. And this is the file that you need to upload to the Vadin directory. Whilst this is the file that uh, the developers are going to end up using the jar file, but upload the zip file right it contains uh, um, more stuff than just the jar all right so where where do you do that if you go to the add-on directory which is vadin.com slash directory you will need to create a new account so I'm using my personal account right now at vadin.com uh, but uh, basically what that means is that it gives you this option over here publish component um, now you might want to create maybe uh, a new account f for your organization or company and publish the add-ons in, 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 in their name I don't know uh, that's uh, that's an option that's up to you uh, but the important thing is that you'll find this and in fact this shows again the uh, everything I have been showing you maybe except step 4 which is to set the the, um, the version of the uh, component or the add-on or um, yeah uh, using uh, Maven mm. all this is what I've been uh, showing you so we are on the last step now upload file I'm actually not going to upload this silly <laughs> uh, uh, add-on uh, but you get the idea you select this file you upload it and I'm gonna show you maybe with an, one of my, uh, my components so let's pick uh, maybe this is a funny one drunk mode uh, you'll end up in this in a screen like this where you can uh, select an image that's gonna be shown in the, in the list of um, add-ons you can uh, specify the summary uh, the description it supports markdown and then you can select the categories for that I guess that's it yeah then you save this and then it it's uh, it becomes available when you want to upload new versions maybe you found uh, you fixed a, a bug or something you create a new version so let's say it's uh, 1.0.1 1 
.zip, then you go ahead and upload it here in the versions tab. All right. And after that, when uh, people go to the directory, for example, in the case of this funny uh, add-on, they'll find it there. And you'll find a page for that uh, with all the information you uh, included. You can add links to the source code, uh, a demo. If you are curious, I uh, <laughs> suggest to uh, go find this drunk mode and click this demo button. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty funny. And, um, and yeah, so developers can just go ahead and copy the dependency and, and add it into their pom.xml files and start using your add-ons. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.